Hello, my name is Ernst Kölnsberger. I'm a German art historian and uh, Indologist. And I came to India for the first time in 1974 with a group of interested Germans who wanted to know art and architecture of India. And I came across of C. Douglas at the same time. First, I had met some other painters who were living in Chola Mandel. And when I came there, I was fascinated by a young man with black weird hair, looking a little bit strange. And he was sitting there drinking whiskey and uh, was speaking about German philosophy and German poetry. And he recited some German poetry. And I thought, this is astonishing that someone in India, in South India, recites German poetry in German. And especially what re he recited, it was Rilke, it was Nietzsche, it was later on Kafka, and some of the philosophers, he spoke about the philosophy of Nietzsche, he spoke about the philosophy of uh, Schopenhauer and Kant, and he was very much aware of all those streams of German philosophy of the last 200 centuries. When I looked at his paintings, this was also something astonishing, because some of the paintings, they looked like I had seen before, like this yellow one which you see here, which is a very early painting by uh, C. Douglas, and is, there's no resemblance, no similarity to what he is doing now. Uh, and I thought I will buy one small painting by him, not this one, but a small uh, design, a small drawing. And when I met him the second time, I was fascinated once more by him, because his drawings were absolutely fantastic. They were very uh, subtle, they were very... Uh, intensely done and they're all were very philosophical a lot of words in there and a lot of philosophical mean, meanings in there and so by and by i came back very often to india and whenever i came to india i met douglas for a long time then for about 10 years i did not meet him because uh, he was kind of away and he was kind of away out of this novel world he was kind of included in himself. It was a way, an interior voyage, I think he did at that time, and he had also some problems with himself. But then I met him once more because I had in the meantime done an exhibition with works of him. I had organized an exhibition in a small German gallery with uh, gallerists, uh, and uh, they showed there also some paintings by Douglas. And at that time I also met his son, who is now a brilliant young man, and I met his former wife there, and we got to know each other a little better. And when I came back to Cholamandel, sometimes he did not let me in, because he had just locked his door, and he did not let in anyone. So it took me some time to call him some time, and then all of a sudden, in the 90s, end of the 90s, and the beginning of the new, cent uh, the new millennium, he opened a little bit more. And so I thought, this is an interesting person, and all the paintings that I had seen then were fascinating for me because that was a completely different quality and a completely different way of looking at life. Everything what I saw was dark. Everything what I saw was a kind of uh, not optimistic. It was a uh, hard work, a, a world, a world of pain, a world of suffering, a world of uh, not friendly uh, members of this world. And I thought he must have a lot of difficulties with himself. And he kind of freed himself uh, from those difficulties by painting all those things. But he did it in a way which flabbergasted me because it was so high quality. It was so nicely and fantastically thought over. It was so exquis exquisitely uh, interpreted by himself. It was so philosophical. And at the same time, it was also highly uh, artistic with an excellent high quality of painting. Uh, also from the way of doing things very, uh, from his way of doing things uh, in a way of, 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 of real masterly work. And uh, so by and by I 
got a lot of his paintings. It was always not easy to buy them because they were very much sold out very soon. And they were very big. The, the ones I liked were very big because I like very big paintings, very large paintings. And so it was, it was also difficult to get them to Germany. But and on the other hand, it was more difficult because all his paintings are not oil on canvas. He told me once he did only eight paintings uh, oil on canvas, and uh, I bought one of them. And even this painting is not a normal painting oil on canvas, but he put some bandages on the canvas, and only then he painted on it. And he said, I cannot have this exquisite surface, you know, this is not how life is. This is not how I understand life. And so I got to know him quite well, and whenever I was in Tulamandel and I met him and I succeeded to meet him, he was always very friendly and very open, and he always liked to speak with me for a long time. We had a lot of drinks together, and uh, with his drinks and with our talks, we became quite good friends. And whenever now I come back to Tulamandel, I also meet him and try to speak with him because it's always a kind of a reward to speak with an artist who is so well uh, into philosophy and into poetry. And it was not only German poetry that he recited, it was also T.S. Eliot, it was also French poetry, and I was astonished that also his uh, knowledge of French was quite well. And uh, I spoke with him about Derrida, I spoke with him about Jean-Paul Sartre, I spoke with him about a lot of other French philosophers, mainly existentialist philosophers, and this is one of those basic things that I liked very much with him, to see his way into art was always a way that was not separating art in different parts, in different species, but it was always art altogether. It was painting, it was drawing, it was philosophy, it was poetry, and it was also novel. So for me, uh, C. Douglas is one of the artists from Chola Mandel who has done a huge development and a very extraordinary development from the first paintings which I have seen until now where he is, in my uh, eyes, one of the most important contemporary artists of uh, South India and especially one of those artists who is not defined to South Indian art. He's not defined even to Chola Mandal art or to the so-called modernists of Madras. So he comes from there. He comes from C.G. Panikkar. He comes from Rede Panaidu, from T. Ramanujan, and from all the people in uh, Chola Mandal who were his friends and his colleagues and later on as he would say my non-friends, his non-friends because he always liked to speak uh, in this kind of uh, uh, jeu de mots, in this playing with words all together. So uh, my beginning with C. Douglas was a beginning of discussions and the beginning of really appreciating his art and I more and more got into his art and uh, at the moment I think I have about 10 or 12 of his paintings and even in my family some of my nephews are great collectors of uh, Douglas.